Hello, welcome to this week's Forex Outlook here at XM.com. My name is Rafi Boyajian, currency analyst, and here with me is our chief economist, Michalis Sorenjadis. Uh, so, Michalis, uh, it's been all about the US dollar this past week. Uh, we've had a lot of headlines on trade, uh, first regarding NAFTA, uh, and now uh, the China US trade war is back in focus again. Uh, so, please, can you give us a uh, briefly tell us what, what happened? Very briefly, the US dollar started a little bit uh, weak on the weak side. We had uh, those uh, comments from Fed President Powell, which may or may not have uh, sounded dovish. Maybe they were a bit of an excuse for profit taking on the dollar, which had rallied a bit too far too quickly, I think. And uh, this uh, led to some dollar weaknesses, especially after the news that uh, there was a deal between the US and uh, Mexico. This led to uh, some further weakness in selling of the dollar because. Uh, it's seen as a positive uh, risk sentiment. Uh, the dollar also plays a role of, as a bit of a safe haven from these uh, trade uh, disputes. So uh, a lot of people said that uh, they wanted to sell the dollar. So that was one piece of news. However, towards the end of the week, the latter half of the week, uh, we had uh, some aggressive comments from uh, President Trump with respect to tariffs uh, on uh, Chinese goods, which may come into effect uh, much sooner than the market expected. So this led to a little bit of a risk of sentiment and uh, some boosting of the dollar. Although we have to point out that uh, safe havens uh, such as uh, the yen and the Swiss franc did even better in the gold uh, uh, rally a little bit also from uh, depressed uh, levels. So those were the, the, it was a bit of a mixed week for the US dollar as we said although it's still a holiday week and we'll talk about that uh, when we, we come to yours. Uh, we also had uh, some uh, big moves in the pound because uh, uh, remember that uh, we, had, uh, those, uh, we had those worries about uh, no deal uh, Brexit, which uh, became quite intense. And there were some uh, positive uh, sounds coming out of from the EU chief negotiator, chief uh, Brexit negotiator, who said that, that, that uh, the union might be willing to give uh, an unprecedented deal uh, to the UK. So this boosted optimism that uh, there could be uh, a deal uh, in the autumn, maybe. Although uh, the uh, negotiator Barnier was a little cautious to roll those uh, comments uh, back because he said we have to be ready for a no deal Brexit. Also, uh, the pound uh, retained uh, most of its gains. I think that those were the highlights of uh, the week that uh, passed. So coming uh, to the week uh, that will be, Rafi, what uh, do we have to pay attention to, especially with respect to the US dollar, which, as you said, was the uh, main star of the week? Uh, right. So the, we've got quite a few imp important data releases out of the US. We've got the ISM manufacturing and non-manufacturing PMIs. It's going to be quite a start though on Monday. It's, uh, it's going to markets will be closed uh, both in Canada and the US for, for Labor Day. Uh, but then uh, it's going to be quite a flurry of data apart from the ISM uh, PMIs. Uh, the, uh, it's going to be of course the non-farm payrolls uh, for August. Uh, we are expecting another solid uh, gain of jobs uh, in uh, for the month of August. Uh, we could potentially see a small uptick in wage growth from 27 to 2.8%. Uh, uh, We're also going to have quite a number of Fed speakers um, giving public uh, speeches, uh, so that could potentially move the dollar uh, as well. Uh, but perhaps the, the main focus uh, will be uh, on, uh, as we were discussing, those 200 billion of tariffs on Chinese uh, imports. Uh, we've got the public comment period uh, coming to an end on September the 6th, uh, and President Trump uh, in his remarks, he suggested that uh, those uh, tar uh, tariffs could come into effect soon after that deadline uh, ends. Uh, so once again, we could potentially see uh, trade concerns being the main driver for, uh, for the and, U.S. dollar. Uh, we had a fairly strong uh, data, I neglected to say that this week out of the U.S., we had a strong revision of uh, U.S. Uh, GDP, a strong upward revision, and we also had a very strong uh, consumer confidence. But as you said, maybe those are not the main market drivers uh, right now. 
not so much uncertainty about the uh, Fed uh, policy, at least in the short term, and uh, all these trade issues. And uh, let's go uh, to the Luni and the Aussie, two commodity currencies. I understand that there will be some uh, developments also concerning... Uh, yeah, and, and, if, and in fact, both currencies did see some volatility uh, this week. Uh, the OZ uh, went up and down and now looks set to uh, end the week down by 1%. We had uh, some poor numbers on capital expenditure. Uh, so that we could potentially see uh, the GDP numbers due next week, uh, perhaps potentially missing expectations. We are expecting growth of 0.7%. Uh, that's significantly lower than the 1% we saw in the prior quarter. We also have a Reserve Bank of Australia policy meeting. Uh, we're not expecting any changes from the RBA, uh, so the real focus will be on those GDP, GDP numbers and, of course, uh, any update on the US-China trade war, which, of course, the Aussie is uh, very sensitive to. Uh, and looking at the Canadian dollar, uh, we saw the loony gaining significantly earlier this week uh, as uh, the US and Mexico reached a bilateral trade deal. and. Therefore, Canada was allowed to rejoin the NAFTA talks. Uh, we've got the deadline, the end of, end of week deadline uh, for US and Canada to uh, round up their um, uh, renegotiations. Uh, so if we do get a deal, we could see a strong start to the loony uh, next week. Uh, but the Bank of Canada is... Uh, uh, we do have Bank of Canada meeting coming up. They're not expected to raise interest rates. Uh, we did see GDP growth for the second quarter in Canada coming slightly below expectations this week. Uh, so that dashed uh, any chances uh, of a September rate hike. So now investors are looking at October as a more likely date. So any hope uh, for the loony might come from the trade negotiations rather than uh, uh, Bank of Canada. Uh, so, of course, uh, trade will be all important again uh, next week with those deadlines coming up, especially for the for Chinese uh, goods. And, of course, we'll be on the lookout for any Brexit-related uh, headlines. With that, thank you very much, uh, Rafi, for your input. Thank you very much uh, for watching and have a great day.